Hello, fellow risk takers, and welcome to my worst investment ever. Stories of loss to keep you winning. In our community, we know that to win in investing, you must take risk, but to win big, you've got to reduce it. Go to myworstinvestmentever.com and join our Facebook group to connect with our community of guests and fellow listeners. Fellow risk takers, this is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stott Saint. I'm here with featured guest Donald Cohen. Donald, are you ready to rock? Oh, for sure. Can't wait. I just can say from our time that we've had <clears throat> before we turn on this recorder uh, that I am supercharged up about listening to what you have to share with us. I want to introduce you to the audience, so just give me a second. Ladies and gentlemen, Donald Cohen is the founder of DonaldCohenConsulting.com which is collaboratively empowering LinkedIn proficiency and performance. And ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen him on LinkedIn, go to Donald Cohen and you will find him. He is amazing. He's the founder, CEO of Tool King, and his major accomplishments are two-time Internet Retailer of the Year, two-time Top 50 Website of the Year by Internet Retailer, three-time Inc. 500 CEO, and top Amazon and Walmart Marketplace partner, generating $200 million in sales, beginning with $4 on eBay. Donald, take a minute and fill any further tidbits about your life. Yeah, I've been uh, extremely fortunate and uh, grew up in Detroit uh, under kind of a challenging uh, circumstances. And I think from the time I was about eight, I became pretty independent. You know, I was the first one with a shovel when it snowed. You know, I was always picking up, you know, change wherever I could. And it just made me a, a really good hustler. You know, I, I just love working things and making things better. Mm. Um, I grew up in Cleveland, so not very far from Detroit. And uh, I it's, it's those cities are really built on hustle. In fact, you realize like sometimes when I go to China, I realize like that hustle in some of those cities that are coming up is pretty amazing amount, the amount of hustle. So let's talk a little bit of just briefly before we get into your story. Uh, you know, you're doing some amazing stuff on LinkedIn and you're finding a lot of success. And I know a lot of my listeners are like, I don't know what to do with LinkedIn and, you know, I put my profile up, but I'm not getting much attention and I'm not sure how LinkedIn fits in. I'm, I'm working at a company. Is LinkedIn really important? Or I got my own business, you know, should I focus on Facebook or whatever? Give us a little breakdown about what you've learned about LinkedIn and what you're doing on LinkedIn. Thank you for that opportunity, Andrew. I, um, I've been on LinkedIn for quite a while. And up until about 18 months ago, and it just coincided with the pandemic, I was basically like everybody else, just a billboard, you know, just sitting out there waiting for someone to want what I had. And then I decided, you know, I had retired from my earlier business five years ago, it took about two, three years to smell the roses. And I just got too much experience and relevancy to not attached to something. So I saw LinkedIn as a kind of a puzzle, kind of intriguing. And because I wasn't under time or money pressure, you know, I could do it right. And what I wanted to do is take my high level, high performance experiences with walmart.com and Amazon and bring it to a social media platform where, pro where the people weren't products that could be commoditized. And I started posting and I haven't missed a day of posting in 18 months. Mm. So when you're doing that 18 months, you see the good, the bad, and the not so good every day. And you can observe where everybody was a year ago, where they are today. You know, you drive the neighborhood, you see where all the cars are parked and you wonder what's, what are they serving in there? And so I just continue to see that people were, primarily doing a couple things. One is they were good at building connections. When I did my polls recently, 
when I ask people, do you like connections, con uh, content, or um, a third choice, it was always connections mm. with the hope that maybe like buying lottery tickets, if you assembled enough of them or popcorn, something would go off for you. And then the next level of people who might have gotten good on the connection side were terrible on the best practice of proficiency, right? They were like a bull in a china store. Mm. And, you know, I found that people, because there's so much cynicism, skepticism, that trust is everything. And if you can develop better trust faster with more people, now you've got at least maybe a tailwind, but at least not a headwind. So the third thing was performance. So I decided what I did against major marketplaces was aggregate huge drop shippers. So what I thought is why not aggregate, uh, we had talked about that earlier, if about half a percent of LinkedIn is actually active every day. So let's mm -hmm. say 700 million to 3 million what would it be to take another half a percent off of the 700 million and put them into the 3 million category? And the way I really got big with a lot of my businesses is I would go to my biggest partners and say, what's your biggest problem that you are not able to solve? And right there, I would build scale into my process instead of trying to build numbers so I can do my thing, it doesn't, it, it takes too long and it's, it's too uncertain. So looking at LinkedIn, I said, wow, they give you this access to all these people with all these wonderful tools and they get better all, all the time and no one's using them. No one's using them consistently. And here's the other thing, so hardly anybody has a plan. You know, I say to people, if you went to the grocery store, you would have an idea of what you were there for, right? Mm. If you go to LinkedIn and you just say, well, I'll do a little of this and a little of that, you know, there's, there's a, a, a saying, you can't manage what you can't measure, right? And, and if you can put it together. So anyways, with that said, I started this uh, collaborative group that was distilled from my 30,000 followers to my 300 people that I tag regularly mm. and really the statement was who wants to move to the fast lane right and the key I, I found out is people will invest untold time and get no result and feel they broke even versus putting a few hundred dollars into themselves and challenging themselves to get smarter and get better before they got bigger mm. because it's a lot easier that way than getting bigger and then trying to get better so uh, it's a huge opportunity, but what I learned about LinkedIn is it's all about you and your brand. Yep. So right? I'm gonna while, while you're talking, I'm gonna for the for the YouTube listeners out there, viewers, I'm gonna bring up your YouTube uh, right here. And for the listeners out there, I've got uh, I've got Donald's uh, uh, LinkedIn profile up on the screen and. I just want to review a couple things that I like about your profile. The first is, you know, you've got this great banner which clearly states, maximize your LinkedIn opportunity. And it has a damn call to action that's so clear. Direct message me or visit doncohenconsulting.com. So basically, you've told me exactly what you can bring me and you've told me exactly how to contact you. Then I look at your description here and it says, I can help you maximize your LinkedIn opportunities through a 30-day LinkedIn success plan or my advanced LinkedIn collaboration group. And that is such a clear uh, message. I just go down a little bit. I see some uh, video and some other clips here. And then I see you've got 33,000 followers. And then I see your posts. And I see that you get 150 reactions, 73 comments, 148 reactions, 119 comments. And the activities that you're doing are impressive. Now, for a lot of people, they don't focus on that. They focus on how do I get my experience to say the right thing, you know? But the fact is, is that that stuff hardly matters compared to the rest of it. And that's where what's interesting about your LinkedIn profile is that the experience section is pretty small and straightforward, pretty clear. But that's not what it's about. It's about what's above. So um, based upon what I've just gone through, Maybe you can just give some tips to the audience who's listening, 
or watching about what they can do today to improve themselves on LinkedIn? Thank you for that opportunity. First of all, you know, what I learned, and you can see, I use caps, I use emojis. Uh, people don't have attention span, they don't have time. Whatever you've got to say, say in four words, because that's all <laughs> they're going to, if they see anything, that's they're going to see. If you say, I'm a, a scientist and I'm a this, I'm a this, it, it has no value. And what I learned is you need to be client value facing everything you do. It's not about you. It's about what can you do for them? And are you accessible and available that if someone says, you know, I want to learn more? Well, I'm here. I'm here for everybody. Mm. The other thing is on your description, and you're right, it's what are you going to be able to do today? Yesterday is gone. Yep. You might have picked up some, some uh, hints and tips you can use, but it's like, where do you fit in right now? I think, with, again, what can I do for you? I can help you do this, and here's how I can do it. And it's all straightforward. Here's the other thing. Being opaque does everybody a disservice. Mm. You know, you might as well tell everybody right off the bat who you are, why you're there, and what you're looking for from them. You know, and because... If it's not right, you want to move into the place where it is right. It's yep. not a judgment. It's just an alignment. And the people who do, you know, and here's the thing. If you uh, post every day and I tag between 80 and 100 people on every post, which means I'll get 80 to 100 responses, I've got the post down to 20 minutes a day. And mm -hmm. what I did is I followed McDonald's in the lettuce, tomato, onions, and pickles. So every day I do the same post. People are always focused. I got to change people. No one, I don't even remember what I posted last week. Who else mm. will? So mm. I do the same three tips, three quotes, and person. People want to know if they're the person of the day. Uh, and uh, based on that, there are people who love my quotes. And you know, I get so many comments that say, number three, like I had a quote that said, you know, the lion has to wake up and chase the gazelle and the gazelle's got to outrun the lion. <clears throat> People ate it up, yep. you know, and it didn't, it didn't, all I do is go to brainy quotes, pick up three quotes a day. And after about a year, I got a stack of quotes. So that's like the lettuce. So you pick yep. three of this, three of this, one of this, boom, it's a template. It works. And then I tag it. And then I only tag people who have been active commenters in the last 72 hours, mm. right? And here's one thing I'll say about the 33,000 followers. They were all uh, attracted through a comment or a post. I did direct messaging <clears throat> and slicing and dicing, and I got great people. But what it doesn't tell you, are they active? Are they interested? Yep. Right? I can get all the people like me. But I'd rather have people are posting every day, commenting every day, interacting every day. So that 33,000 is solid people that were real and continue to support whatever it is. Yep. And I think too many people are afraid of what they're going to hear if they actually listen. You know, they're afraid that if they put down what their goal is today, either they're not going to make it or it's going to be a real modest goal. And I tell people, I have my meetings on Wednesday. I said today, I said, you know, when you're doing this, you're, you're your own boss, right? If you were someone's boss, what would you expect from a day's work? Mm. And if you can't work harder for yourself, then you should work for somebody else and build right. somebody else's dream. So I, th I think being out there, being consistent, I think by your actions, you project your, your, your intangibles right? Dependability, yep. trustworthiness, consistency, value-added serving, uh, accessibility. If you give everybody more than anybody else, that has to mean something in that big of a group. And here's the thing I'm noticing now. Just like our, our discussion today, yep. once you reach a certain point, it's like a snowball going up a hill. It mm. seems like it takes forever. And on the other side, you can't stop it. 
And if you build that velocity, and I look at LinkedIn like, like a down escalator, if you're not moving up, you're moving down. There is no standstill. Yep. If you stop doing what you're doing, and the other thing, everything is based on reciprocity. Mm. Right? You take a step, I take a step, but nobody takes two steps. If I <laughs> if I tag you and you don't comment, you're not going to get tagged. If you comment and don't get tagged, you're not going to do it. So the idea is stair step up to higher levels of collaboration because the value is getting off of LinkedIn. Yep. Right. So let, let me ask you now to wrap up this section. Mm -hmm. you, you're good at this, and I want you to, to make this very clear to the audience. What's your call to action? What do you want the listeners to do right now to get more of what you've got? Great question. First thing I would say is take inventory. You know, add up, you know, plus minus wherever you want and say, mm. what do I have here? Right. And just in your mind, fast forward and say, where is this going to lead me? And how long is it going to take? And do I have the time? And that's the thing. Time is not anybody's friend, mm. right? The sooner you get smarter, the sooner you get better, the sooner you get more successful. So what I would say is look at collaboration. If okay. I can name one word for LinkedIn, that's the key is start teaming up, start partnering, reaching out. It's you being proactive. It's you saying, I need help. And you know yep. what you'll surprise yourself if you're sincere and authentic? There are so many good people. If you do it the right way, they will say, I, I, can, I can have a call with you, right? Yep. So the idea is make yourself worthy for the help you feel you need. And find somebody like a group of my, like mine, this, because everything I do is month to month. I don't want anybody to overextend themselves. Yep. If I can't help somebody, I definitely don't want to hurt anybody. But the time one can save, and actually I came up with a boot, uh, boot camp plan, four weeks from soup to nuts, that I can take you from profile to total alignment of messaging, content strategy. You know, it's so much easier after you've been up and down the mountain a couple of times. So how do they, how do people, that someone's listening to this and they say, I want that. Where should they go? Should they go, go to, to Don Cohen go Don Consulting Cohen? Com. Got I've it. got three plans. Okay. One is a 30 minute free uh, Zoom. So if anybody just is out there and is serious about doing better or yep. needing to do better on LinkedIn, because the only thing I really require is some commitment. Yep. You know, I can't do more than that. So if, if you want a 30 minute Zoom, I also, for my $97 a month, advanced LinkedIn collaboration group that meets every Wednesday uh, for knowledge share and support is I, I give two free membership passes, mm. right? So before anybody even has to join, they can see what it is. Right. And what I'm looking to do is my, my big fame in the past was aggregating big vendors against big marketplaces. Yep. I could see where, 15 to 20 in a group, it wouldn't be hard to get 100 groups. Yep. Right? And I'm thinking about geographic groups, trade groups, industry groups, people like groups, so that the 9, 10 people are kind of somebody you can relate to. So it's, it's all about bringing people to a level of proficiency where they can get the full value of LinkedIn. It is one of the uh, most underdeveloped opportunities I've ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that you are as excited as I am to hear Donald's answer to the question, what's your number one goal for the next 12 months? But I'm not going to ask it right now because now it's time to share your worst investment ever. And since no one goes into their worst investment thinking it will be, tell us a bit about the circumstance leading up to it and then tell us your story. Great. Uh, well, basically... Uh, I've only had one job in my life. I worked in a grocery store from the time I was 15 to 18. And actually, my mother got me the job that I didn't even know I was, I was going to work. And I stayed there long enough to be the number one packer. I started at 17. And the only reason I did that is my friend went to University of Michigan and I went to Wayne State University. So when I got out of college, nobody wanted me. And anybody who did want me, I didn't want them. 
So I decide if no one wants me, I'll take me, you know? And I opened up a little tool store in Ferndale, Michigan. And over time, and everybody laughed at me because, you know, in the seventies, if you went to college, I mean, that was like something and in Detroit, every automaker was hiring. Mm. So when you become an entrepreneur back then, it was really aligned with misfit, right? Or don't fit in. And they were right in that respect. Mm. I made $50 a week for the first year. By the second year, I had bought the building, the restaurant next door, and I was living in a great high rise with a new car. And that's what short-term pain for long-term gain was, is making that 50 bucks a week and let everything live in the business. So anyways, after four years of being pretty successful, sold the business, sold, sold the building, and uh, me and my uh, girlfriend who had been together seven years, she had had enough of Detroit and me too. So we decided, hey, let's get married and take a year and go around the Sun Belt. So anyways, we got married in Vegas. It was just me and her. The whole thing cost a hundred bucks and it was a donation even. Uh, and we got to Denver. I got a real estate license. She got a teaching certificate. And because of my background in tools, I decided to look at tool stores. And one night I came home and I said to Ann, I said, got to get back into business. And she said, you only been in this business a few days, give it a couple of weeks. Like, no, we'll do both, right? I can do real estate. I can do this. You can do that. Together, we can do everything. And when you're in your 20s and you don't know nothing, yeah, you believe it. So the only thing we really had was my new Buick Park Avenue Limited. And I think it was worth about nine, 10 grand. It took me five banks to get a car loan on my car. And it was only, and the reason I was successful, and I think this is good information for everybody, is the only good thing about getting rejected, I would always say, what was it that I was missing? What could I have done differently, right? I understand you're not gonna loan me the money, but you know, I'd like to know where I, I'm coming up short. So maybe you know, I can work on it. By the fifth banker, I had had all those questions answered. Right. So I got the loan. The six, the got, six was just a setup. Boom. Go right in and get yeah, it. But it, was, it was, but it showed me that, that uh, failure isn't final. Yep. Right. You don't lose until you quit. And then you got to add the score up as long as the game plays, you know, who knows, uh, yep. uh, they say a chair and a chip or something. Hmm. So uh, we, we set up, you know, this is, we buy a dog. <laughs> It was just me and my wife, and we bought this little French poodle, and we named him Rocky after the mountains. So now the day of reckoning is we opened the store. In Detroit, I had an ad that was killer. Would bring them in, and I said, well, I'm just going to use the same ad, same inventory, and it just happened. It was my birthday. It was a Friday on December 8th, and we're just married. My wife makes this beautiful chocolate cake. And we're going to celebrate my birthday and, and the opening of the store all on the same day. And my wife's vacuuming and the dog's barking. And it's like getting close to open. I said, no, cut it down. We got people coming. We got to be ready. The whole day, no one shows up. Everything in the world, every family member, when I left Detroit for Denver, who said, who do you know there? What do you know there? Why would you leave a good business and all your friends and family to go to somewhere like that, right? And that is ringing in my ears. And I said, you know, then we got to eat the chocolate cake and you're choking on it, you know? And, and you know, all this happiness in the morning turned into, wow, you know? And I said, well, first day, it just ran in newspapers. We're a new business. Nobody knows us. Next day, same thing. Then, and, and the next day, the only people came in were the competition to check us out. And everybody left said, I don't know what you're doing here, but it ain't going to work. This hmm. ain't Detroit, right? You're coming from an auto town. And they were right. I was coming from Blue Collar to Denver. So after about two weeks of nobody coming in, and now you see, we've got bills, right? We signed a lease. Hmm. So now rent's coming due. We only had 10 grand, five went into fixtures and five went into inventory. So after three weeks and now it's Christmas and a competitor from Detroit shows up with a bigger store and I'm choking. 
So I said, listen, that's why I said, let's just close for a few weeks because no one's, no one even knows we exist. No one's going to miss us. And let, let's, let's put our heads together here, right? And meanwhile, I'm thinking, I'm thinking nothing's coming up. Mm. I even bought a little tape recorder, one of those little micro recorders. Yep. I said, I'll buy one of these. So anytime a good idea, I'll, I'll put it down here. And, and actually, I came out with a partner who I was partners in Detroit, and he's going through the same misery, right? He put his car up too. And I said, well, let's do wholesale open to the public. And I said, we'll get some paint, we'll paint the windows, and we'll make it look more like a warehouse look. So we all got our paintbrushes. And I said, no, that's not going to work. Forget that. So we bought the paint. We never used it. So, you know, you're sitting there and you, you think what it, it, when you're not used to absolute failure, mm. it, it's it's soul wrenching. It's brutal. You know, you go home at night and you want to believe when you wake up what you what the problem is, is not going to be there. And everything's on the line. But Mr. Economics wants- is relentless. When he comes yeah, knocking but, on your door. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You know, that's why with LinkedIn, a lot of people don't have bills, don't have rent, so they don't feel they've got to do something to pay for something. Mm. So, you know, with that story, uh, you know, what happened is, and I think this is what people can use, when the business doesn't fit you, you need to fit the business. Right. So if all it does is all it does, then that's all you can work with. Right. Mm -hmm. It can't be responsible for things that it's not responsible for. So what I finally did is I called a friend in Indianapolis. And that's another lesson. Make sure you have good friends. (laughs) Right. And his name was Don. And I said, Don, here's my situation. I came into this town thinking it was Detroit. And it isn't. And I was trying to sell air tools, electric tools, real high end stuff. And I said, I got one impact wrench that I've got $2,000 worth of. Can you send me anything, screwdrivers, vices, bench grinders, whatever? Because here at a certain point in business, it's a cash flow issue. Yep. Profitability is not an issue. You got to pay bills. Yep. Right. So I decided, what can I cash in? the fastest. And anyways, he sent me a load of this stuff. And my wife says, what are you doing? And I said, we're going to put it all in at cost. Because if it can sell a cost, we're done anyways. But if it sells a cost, we got 2000 bucks to invest. Hmm. And I made it three days only open to the public because it took me four days to restock. Right? So it was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, wholesale to the public. Uh, and a funny thing I did, you, you think these ways, is people would buy like a socket set. And on the way out, you would say, well, if you're not going to use the box, I'll take it from you. And a lot of times, say, what do you want a box for? I said, well, just, you know, take it so you don't have to throw it away. I take that empty box and put it right behind the full box. And now it looked like I got two of those items. You know, and, you know, and, and you, you start putting your name on cards, anybody you, that comes in, you'd stay with them until the next person comes in, you find out, is there some way they can refer business? Yep. Can they teach you something about the market? So, you know, I think the lesson is start where you are with what you have, you know, be, start before you're ready. And, and what, when what happened ready, with that business? That business went wild. Because that week that I put the ad in, I sold out and I kept selling out. But here's what I did. The time frame between Indianapolis and the cost of freight, especially on vices and bench work, was significant. So I found a local warehouse and I'd go in with a shopping cart and I'd pick out two vice grip, three channel lock. I remember I bought a compressor for $200. I looked at it for six months until I sold it. And I couldn't believe it. And I ended up buying another one anyways the next day. But it just took off. So I went from three days a week in two months to seven days a week. I went in three months to a second location. 
Within a year, I had a third location. In the fourth year, I got a warehouse with a warehouse location. And before all was said and done, I was an Inc. 500 company three years in a row. I generated over $200 million in sales from that. I, I became a regional and a national company. I had stores in Milwaukee. Uh, then I got into mail order. And then from there, I pivoted into online and did another 200 million in sales with Amazon and Walmart. So if it wasn't for perseverance, taking responsibility, and I'll tell you one thing, that's a good thing if, you if you've burned your boats and there is no retreat, you live that experience. Mm. There's no way you can walk away from it. You, you find ways. Yeah. And what I learned is, and I did a lot of turnarounds too, you know, after that, is you'd make a decision and a commitment that I said to myself, what do you want to do? And then I said to myself, what are you willing to do to do it? And if I decided that was it, there was no second guessing. I was doing things I didn't want to do, wasn't comfortable doing, but knew was necessary to do. Mm. And it's funny when you clear the path and you get to a really strong base. And I think that's the thing is come inside and build strength inside. Banish fear. Fear, fear is your worst ingredient in this whole thing because you don't want to think what if it doesn't yep. you want to keep thinking what if it does and how do, not only what if what do i do today little things done right compounded over time are huge and i think that's important and i want to say to everybody there is greatness in all of you you just have to find ways to pull it out mm. you know honestly because yep. I'm a nothing special. I have to say that. And I know people have done really well say that. And because it's honest about it is if I can do it, anybody can do it. If you do the disciplines, if you pace yourself, if you become your own best friend, you know, and if you have fun, mm. I know it's a hard thing to do during adversity to have fun, but that takes the, you know, the, the pain out of it. Yep. You know? It would be awful if it wasn't fun. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to hear another story about business failure and eventual success mm -hmm. in Colorado, also go to episode 412, that's Weldon Long, and his title of his episode is Sell Your Way Out of Financial Trouble. And there's a lot of parallels here. Uh, so let me ask you, Donald, Based on what you learned from this story and what you continue to learn, what one action would you recommend our listeners take to avoid suffering the same fate? I would say have a plan. You know, I believe I was a little ambitious and over enthusiastic. And I think have a plan. Put it this way. Anything you can put in writing becomes powerful. Mm. Because if you have a chance to look at it and you play with it and, and add and subtract, pretty soon you, you, you decide, hey, this is where this is going to go. And if it's where you want it to be, then you're on your way. So but don't just jump people, into it. Yeah, I think, I think a strategy yeah. and have what I would consider an informal board of directors, mm. right? Build, build a group, whether it's three, four, five, and LinkedIn is an absolutely wonderful place to get advice, you know, there's a saying, if you want money, ask for advice. If you want uh, advice, ask for money. And I think that, you know, most people would be surprised if they reached out in a, in a quality way mm. and say, hey, I, 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 I admire what you're doing. I, I could use a little of this or a little of that or see people like yourself, you know, be the builder, yep. you know, be the proactive player. And I think that's key is always take action. Don't sit around, think, you know, if you're in trouble, you know, that's the time to start moving, stop, start talking. But here's another thing too, is there are no outcomes. Everything in life is a continuum, right? Mm. So if someone says by Friday, something has to happen, well, Saturday is going to show up and what's going to happen then, mm. right? So don't put these unnecessary boundaries, deadlines, you know, <clears throat> 
and flow with it. And here's the thing. I always tell people either you win or you learn. Mm. You never lose unless you quit. And then, like I say, you got to add up the score and find strength in others. And I think if you have family, if you have friends, if you have organizations, you know, make yourself available to that. So it, yep. like okay. I say, it's there. It's an underserved, underdeveloped opportunity. And I am available for that sole purpose is to get you from zero to 60 a lot faster and get you winning, right? Yep. Because if you got the right attitude, if you got the right skill sets, and if you're taking action, then it comes down to what do you have to offer? And do are you the kind of person people want to learn from and to collaborate with? Fantastic. All right, last question. What is your number one goal for the next 12 months? Uh, continue to accelerate the uh, path I'm on. I believe I beta tested it. I experience it every Wednesday because I facilitate it. And what's so cool about it, it makes me accountable for the next Wednesday. I got to show up with something at the picnic, yep. Yep. right? And I got to continue to build value. And what I found about LinkedIn and a lot of other elements like it is that everything ripples, mm. right? You don't just drop a pebble in, in, the, in, a, in, the, in the lake and it falls down. It, it spreads. Yep. And my goal is to help people, you know, is to leave the log pile bigger than I found it, you know, being able to, to get people who send gratifying, sincere, like if you didn't tell me this, I wouldn't have done it, or mm -hmm. I followed you and it worked. And I dare yourself to trust yourself to trust yourself. So <laughs> take, take an action that you might think is, is outrageous, but you know, there's a saying, if you're not working on the edge, you're taking up too much space. Mm. You know, really lean into things, you know, right. immerse yourself, see how much it is. And you'll find out very little resistance. Mm. So, yeah, what I would say is that. Okay. Listeners, there you have it. Another story of loss to keep you winning. Remember to go to myworstinvestmentever.com and join our Facebook group to connect with our community of guests and fellow listeners. As we conclude, Donald, I want to thank you again for coming on the show. And on behalf of A. Stotts Academy, I hereby award you alumni status for turning your worst investment ever into your best teaching moment. Do you have any parting words for the audience? Well, first of all, I want to thank Andrew. I think it's a fabulous show, you know, I, just from being on it and really Andrew bringing out the best in me and my story and facilitating the interaction we have today. And what I hope is people take this and follow it. This is all great advice. There's a lot of wonderful nuggets and I'm available. You know, I'm on LinkedIn. Like I say, Don Cohen, you can go to doncohenconsulting.com and see all my offers. And I want to hear your story. You know, I, I enjoy listening as I'm getting older more than I am talking. So yeah, I invite all of you to reach for the stars and reach out to me if I can help in any way. And Donald is one of those stars, ladies and gentlemen, and we will have the links in the show notes. You can go there or you can just go to LinkedIn and type in Donald Cohen, C-O-H-E-N. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap on another great story to help us create, grow, and protect our well fellow risk takers. This is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stott, saying, I'll see you on the upside.